Vietnam is known for its delicious, affordable food, but we haven't heard much about its desserts. So today, after some extensive research, we're going to be visiting some local dessert shops and cafes around the city of Dalat to experience what traditional desserts Vietnam has to offer, and what goes better with desserts than coffee. So the first stop for today is this place called La Viette Coffee. I was gonna call it a little place, but it's actually not so very little. It's kind of laid out like a bit of a barn. There's loads of artwork of cows. There's a tractor right behind me and they're playing Dolly Parton. So I feel like it's got a bit of a farm feel. <laughs> They sell their own coffees. I think it's a roastery as well, if I'm not mistaken. And it's just huge. They've got a very extensive menu as well. Thank you, by the way, everyone who recommended this place. Uh, it came highly recommended. And also on Google, it had raving reviews. So we basically just had to start it off here. Now, what's in front of me isn't a regular coffee. It's not a regular schmegular coffee. It is a coconut coffee. Suyu. Now, if Google's not gonna fail me, this is called Cafe Suyu in Vietnamese. Please don't get mad at me if I got that wrong. We're trying. Sometimes the writing looks very different to how it sounds to us. This coffee is 45,000 dong, which is a great price for a coffee. What's inside a coconut coffee most of the time is Vietnamese ground coffee, coconut milk, and then also condensed milk. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily what they have in here, but it looks and smells absolutely fantastically creamy. So, let me tuck in. <laughs> mm. Oh, that is so nice. <laughs> mm. oh, it's like creamy, warm, coconutty, sweet. Coffee is also very good, but that is something that Vietnam is very, very good at, is the coffee. What you also get wherever you go that sells coffee is a drink. It's usually some form of tea. It's just nice to go with your coffee. We do like our coffee sweet. Whoa. Oh yeah. Now that is proper sweet. Loads of you recommended this coffee to us. Um, and we're not coffee connoisseurs, but we do like our coffee and we can certainly say that this is a nice one. Thank you. Okay, let's go get some dessert. So we're now at our first dessert place, which is a place called Chair Hem. It's down a little alleyway, and then you turn into what looks like someone's house, but you turn the corner and you come into a little cute uh, sit-down place with all these tiny chairs. But it looks properly family-run. Now, we've ordered three dishes. The first thing that we have is called Che Khoai Zeo, um, I think. <laughs> It is basically, I think, coconut milk with some ice, some taro balls, so sweet potatoes in here, but I think there's also tapioca balls. I'm not 100% sure, but then also, there's what looks like it could be tofu. It looks very interesting. It looks really delicious, actually, so I'm just gonna... It's cold as well, because obviously all the ice in there. Mmm. That looks like a huge tapioca ball. Mmm. I'm trying to figure out what that is. I don't know. It's almost like a little bit gelatinous. It's kind of nondescriptly just sweet. But then, whilst it's in the coconut, with all the little tapioca balls floating around in there as well, it's really, really tasty. This is really nice. I could, I could eat a lot of this. Oh wait, what's that? Oh, it's crunchy. Water chestnut, maybe? Hmm. It's a surprise. <laughs> We don't know much about Vietnamese desserts, and that's one of the reasons we made this video. Let's see what this is like. What was that? This thing's got a crunch inside. Let's try this. Mmm. Yeah, it's definitely coconut milk based, isn't it? Mmm. Mm. Yeah, this is nice. Try one of the white things. Maybe it's some form of milk jelly. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Nice though. The next thing we have is something called Che Choi Nu. It's glutinous rice balls 
in ginger syrup. And there's also sesame seeds on top. Do I eat the whole glutinous rice ball or do I take a bite? What do you think? I don't know, they put a bite, I'm not playing. It's an interesting flavour, an interesting texture to this as well. It's a bit like potato-y on the inside of that. And the white stuff on top is extremely um, sweet, so give that a good mix. Mm. I don't love it, but it's nice, if that makes sense. You give it a go. Mm. One thing to note about this one as well is that it's actually hot, whereas the other one's cold. Mm. Oh, no, it's kind of salty. Yeah. You're right, it almost feels like there's something inside of the ball. Mm. The white stuff that's on top it almost has a bit of a sour taste. Like as if there was like yogurt in there maybe. Mm. But the toasted sesame seeds on top, very nice. A very interesting flavor. I don't, yeah, I like it, but I don't, I'm not obsessed with it yet. It's really nice. In all of the coffee places, that we've been to so far in Vietnam, you get tea. But also, here at the dessert place, they just came with a huge thermos. Now we can just keep topping up our tea, which is really, really nice, especially to wash down the sweet food. Yeah, and it's a good tea as well. Ah, perfect on a cool day. We mentioned in the last video that the weather here is quite a bit cooler than a lot of Vietnam, just because of the elevation levels of Da Lat. So we're 1,500 meters up, which means that it's obviously a lot cooler. It's actually about 10 degrees cooler here, especially in the morning and overnight. It goes down to like 14 degrees, which a lot of you wouldn't call cold. But in our books, with all the summer clothing we have, it's on the cool side. Today is a very rainy, gloomy day, so it's the perfect day to try loads of coffees and loads of desserts. The last dessert in this place is what I think is a just a regular flan. I've never actually really had flan before, but when we did our street food tour in Ho Chi Minh City for five dollars, we bless you. We actually had a flan that was on top of one of the really crazy dessert drinks that we had. So I assume it's just kind of the same. Kind of the same. Look at that. Oh. Mm. Well, it's basically, I don't know if this is obvious for everyone that eats flans often, which I don't, but it almost tastes like a creme brulee without this sort of caramelized sugar on top. This is... Mm. I could have loads of these. <laughs> mm. Everything here, including the tea that was free, was 47,000 Vietnamese dong. Everything is so affordable here. It's time for us to try to finish all of these desserts, drink some more tea, and then head to our next coffee place. Mm. We're now back in the city center of the Lats. We're in a place called Cafe Tung. Now they're playing Celine Dion really loud in there, so we're gonna try and keep the recording inside to a minimum just in case we get copyrighted. This cafe has been here since 1955. They moved locations once, but this place has been here for a long, long time. But we've just ordered two classic Vietnamese coffees with condensed milk, one cold and one hot. So I'm gonna try not to be drowned out by the epic power ballads that they're playing in here. <laughs> I love this kind of music, but it's a little bit difficult when you're filming. Anyway, got a hot coffee with condensed milk and a cold coffee with condensed milk. Now this has a name, Bak Shu. It's a Vietnamese classic. It's basically just beautifully delicious Vietnamese coffee with sweetened condensed milk. Now you obviously stir this before you drink it. This one was 35,000 dong and 25,000 dong, which is very affordable. Oh, look at that. Now that looks and smells good. Oh yeah, it's like rocket fuel. <laughs> This is the type of coffee that you can find pretty much anywhere on the streets here in Vietnam. It's very affordable, very delicious. It's like a dark roast, delicious, creamy coffee with a sweetened condensed milk, which means that you don't have to put any extra sugar in there. It's already very sweet. Now I've gone for the, the iced version. Oh, the condensed milk is awesome in coffee. 
I'm definitely gonna be doing this when we go back home. It's just perfect. You don't need to put like that much condensed milk in and it tastes amazing. Love it. This place is actually really, really cozy. It's quite dark and moody in here. What's is raining outside? This is nice. Drinking a hot coffee, listening to some old classics and just enjoying the vibe of the lap. We are super, super central in Dalat right now, and we're in a place called Kembo Tang Tao. Um, I'm probably not saying that right. <laughs> and basically, what they do is Kembo, which is smashed up avocado and then coconut ice cream. There seems to be a lot of different variants of this, but this is like the OG, so to speak. It is 25,000 dong, so it's extremely affordable. And as soon as we got here, we said, oh, just one, and she like, you could see just like clonked the um, avocado cream, I guess you could almost call it, in there. And it looks so cool. It's just like this kind of creamy mixture. Again, this place is exactly to my liking because it has the tiny little chairs that I love. Not so nice for Dylan because his knees don't go quite under the table. <laughs> like mine do. <laughs> Most other people here seem to fit nicely under the table. But it is basically just right off the side of one of the main streets here in Dalat. And it's quite cute. It's really open. She's doing loads of combos just behind Dylan. Um, and I think that's just what people come here for, just hang out with their friends and have some dessert. So that's exactly what we're going to do, except it's just the two of us. <laughs> this is so cool. You like that Oh, yeah, you don't like avocado. <laughs> I really, really like avocado. I love it. Smells like smells like avocado. <laughs> mm. Well, that's interesting. I almost expected it to be like really sweet, like a really sweetened avocado, but it's almost like it's just like quite literally the flavor of avocado. So if you put that on something savory, I would say that that was savory. But now because it's with the coconut ice cream, which I'm trying to aggressively get out of here. <laughs> I'm making such a mess of this. Look at that. It's like the creamiest blended avocado. Mm. Okay, if you like avocado, no, it is a bit sweet actually. If you like avocado, I think you'd really like this. Super simple, yet just like, oh, really like hearty, like a creamy, fatty, with a sweet, like, Old hint of the um, coconut ice cream. Mm, I like this. If you don't like it, I'll eat it. <laughs> now, I can't get really close to this table because my knees are too high. I actually don't like avocado, so this will be interesting. I'm gonna try it just because I might like it. You know what? It's actually quite nice. I didn't think I was going to like that. Well, it doesn't taste like avocado, really. If you told me that was a... If you didn't tell me that this was avocado, I probably would have thought it was like pistachio or something, but... Because it's green. Yeah, because I can't tell that it's avocado. Mm. Mm. I'm surprised by that, so... If you don't like avocado, you can still come here. <laughs> cool. Try something new every day. So far, all the desserts that we've tried have been really, really nice. I mean, we didn't really know what Vietnamese desserts were like, but if they're all like this, then they're a winner in our books. But they're a lot less sweet than you would expect desserts, especially from where we're from. Desserts tend to be very sweet. So here, it's almost nice that they're a bit more toned down, a bit more refined, and just like a mild, delicious flavor. And it's not huge, it's all like, cute little portions that's perfect for one person or in this case both of us sharing <laughs> we have two more places that we're going to visit today one more special coffee and then another interesting dessert to try so we're now at our final and third coffee place for today there's another dessert one coming but this is our final coffee place for today it's called Café Trum Atsuka, which does primarily Café Trum, which is egg coffee. Now, if you haven't figured it out already, Vietnam has a huge, and I mean 
huge coffee culture. It is the second biggest exporter of coffee, but realistically, if they didn't drink as much as they do, they'd probably be the biggest exporter of coffee. It is coffee everywhere. There's normal to have coffee in the morning, in the evening. Some of the coffee places that we've walked past are still open at 10 p.m. That's something that we can definitely get on board with. Our two egg coffees have just arrived. We're sat on these tiny chairs again, <laughs> right on the side of the road, which is quite fun to get to see all the cars go by. So Adriana's coffee has come with a heart and love on the top. I might just says cafe, so <laughs> maybe the guy fancies her, I don't know. <laughs> well, it'd be better than the other way around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of smart that they put the candle underneath the coffee because Dalat is so cold. The coffee will get colder way faster than it would in a city like Ho Chi Minh. And these coffees were 35,000 Vietnamese dong each. We've already had egg coffee a few times already here in Vietnam, even though we've only been here for a few days. But no coffee video would be complete without it. Now this one is super cute and small. It turns out I think it's a little bit more of a touristic thing than we first expected. But that doesn't make it any less delicious or any less inventive. The ones we had before were in Ho Chi Minh City. Now we're going to be working our way up to Hanoi, which is where the egg coffee actually comes from originally. Uh, and I think we're going to be having plenty more of them there. <laughs> this is actually one of the only ones we could find in Dalat. But this specific cafe, the name of it is quite literally egg coffee. As soon as we walked in, he didn't even give us a menu. He was like, egg coffee? And we were like, two kids. <laughs> I'm gonna stir this. I don't want to ruin the pretty print, but I have to consume it at some point. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> that is just... Never gets old. Oh, it never gets old. It never ever gets old. I'm trying to mix in some of the coffee flavor into the foamy part without making a mess. Oh. It never gets old. It's whipped egg yolk with condensed, sweetened condensed milk. Obviously coffee underneath. A little bit of a sprinkling of cinnamon sometimes on top, which is a nice addition. But it's just so creamy. It literally tastes like whipped marshmallows. It's like the fluffiest, creamiest coffee experience you have to try if you're ever able to try it. Oh yeah, this is definitely my favorite kind of coffee in Vietnam now. Just feels cheeky. It's more dessert than it's coffee. Yeah, yeah. If you don't like sweet coffee, you probably won't like this. Oh, super strong coffee at the bottom, yeah. But now, it's time to go to our final dessert place of the day, which looks really, really interesting actually. Let's go. <laughs> he can take a little nap on my foot, it's fine. <laughs> we are now at a really traditionally, really traditional there. Uh, start again, start again. <laughs> we are at a really traditional looking restaurant or shop here that's called Ko Nung uh, that sells a dessert called Yaort Pho Mai which is a yogurt that's made with cheese. It's interesting, look at that. Oh yeah. And we got all of these. Um, we weren't sure whether we were meant to be choosing how many we wanted and giving it back but we tried to do that and she she left us with all of them so maybe we can take them all home tonight <laughs> so we don't know what the cost is exactly just yet we'll, we'll put it on the screen here first one that i'm gonna try is one of my favorite fruits which is passion fruit yeah it does smell like like cheese well see that It is sour. Yeah. Yeah. Like mm. But I like it. Oh, that is just really good. Mm. Mm -mm. We have to try it. Mm. Yeah. It's just like a 
mix it between like a pudding and a yogurt. It's base. All they do is yogurt. People are just showing up and then they're just getting buckets or like little trays like this one filled with different flavors of yogurt. I mean, in this tray we have strawberry. There's tea, I think, flavored. I don't know if this is like maybe le lemongrass, maybe? I don't know. Pandan, Pandan it could be. Pandan leaf. Um, probably two plain ones, because there's two that don't have a sticker on them. And then this one, which she said is rice. It smells nice. Mm. Oh. It's like sweet sticky rice, but with like a sour layer of yogurt underneath. Now that we've done all these uh, coffee shops and dessert places today, I think we can definitely say Vietnam has some nice desserts. And it's really nice to see some of these local shops where people turn up for five, 10 minutes, eat the desserts and just leave. Because when we arrived in many of these places, it was quite empty. And then people came in, sat down and left. It's really nice to see. Yeah. We're gonna try to devour these eight yogurts now. But if you enjoyed this video, then you might really like the video that's on the screen right now, where we went to a street food market in Ho Chi Minh City and tried to see how many foods we can get for only five US dollars. Yeah.